Well, hello, hello, hello. Hope everyone is doing well. Uh, this is our next video that I am bringing to you. And I hope that uh, this should be a very simple video, I hope. Um, but we are continuing our discussion on inequalities. But this time, it's not just regular inequalities. This is solving inequalities. Now, an inequality, as you learned, is just, it's very similar to an equation. But it's something like x is greater than 5 or something like that. And that's kind of where we're going to, what we're doing. So when we look at this, and I'm going to move to my next screen here. Um, when we solve an inequality, like I said, we're going to solve it exactly like an equation. So let's start with really basic ones here. If I give you x plus 4 is less than 7, okay? Now, in an equation, the difference between an equation and an inequality, in an inequality, you literally, in an equation, let me back up for an equation, in an equation, you get an answer of x equals 2, or x equals 7, or x equals 12. It's one answer. It's what x can be. But when you're talking about inequalities, you're no longer talking about one particular answer. You're talking about multiple answers, actually an infinite number of answers. And let me show you what I mean. If I solve this equation, or this inequality, excuse me, I, and if I do it the way I would do an equation, you look at this and I have x plus 4 is less than 7, <clears throat> and we know we're going to do the opposite. So since I'm adding 4 to x, to solve it, I'm going to subtract 4. But if I do that on one side of the inequality, I better do that on the other side of the inequality. So here, I didn't do anything to the x. Positive 4 and negative 4 will end up canceling each other out. Is less than, and then I have 7 minus 4, which we know is 3. So I have x is less than 3. Well, that doesn't mean x is 3. That means x has to be less than 3, which means it could be 2, it could be 1, it could be 0. It could be negative 1, it could be negative 2, it could be negative 5, it could be negative 2,462. Those are all numbers that are less than 3. But even worse, it could be 4 point... No, it can't be that. It could be 1.2. It could be negative 4.6. It could be 1 half. It could be negative 14 20 fifths. All those numbers count. So can you list every number that is less than 3? And the answer is no, you can't. How do you show all the answers less than 3? Well, that's where we do our graph like we learned in the last video and I would put an open circle at 3 because it can't be 3 and everything less than that so that's how you would show all your answers of x is less than 3. What if I said x minus 7 equals negative 2. What, uh, no, no, what am I doing? Sorry. Let's erase that. Let's try that again. x minus 7 is greater than or equal to negative 2. <clears throat> now, what would you do to solve this? Come on, you go ahead and tell me. Say it. Say it. Say it. And I know you're not. Okay, there you go. That was better. So what do I do? You're right. I would add 7 to both sides. There we go. Nothing happened to the x. The negative 7 and a positive 7 will cancel each other out. Is greater than or equal to. And negative 2 plus 7 is? That's right, it's 5. So here, it's all the numbers that x is greater than or equal to. To 5. And if I was to graph that, I could do 4, 5, 6, 7 type of thing. I know it's greater than or equal to. It's a solid dot 
because it can be 5 and then is greater than or equal to means it's going to be everything to the right of 5. So let's do this. I'm going to give you two to try and see how you do. So let's do x plus 3 is less than or equal to negative 1 and x minus 6 is greater than 4. <clears throat> Just solve them. You don't have to graph them. Just solve them. So pause the video and solve the inequality. Okay. Well, let's see if you did it right. In the first one, you would have subtracted 3 from both sides, and you would have gotten x is less than or equal to, and when I have a negative 1 and a negative 3, I actually get negative 4. How many of you got x is less than or equal to negative 4? Good. Next one, I would have added 6 to both sides. I didn't do anything to the x. The negative 6 and the positive 6 canceled out. Is greater than, and 4 plus 6 is 10. So you get x is greater than 10. So, so far, nothing different than what you do with equations. Inequalities are exactly the same way. Now, <clears throat> I want you to look for a second at this set of numbers. Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Now, tell me, I'm going to make this a giant inequality statement, and I want you to tell me if you agree with what I say. Negative 2 is less than negative 1. Negative 1 is less than 0. 0 is less than 1, and 1 is less than 2. Would you agree with that? Yeah, of course it is, because it's in numerical order, of course. <clears throat> what if I took all of my numbers in the number line and I multiplied it by 2? What happens? What do I get? Well, when I multiply everything by 2, I get negative 4, negative 2, 0, 2, and 4. Do you agree that negative 4 is less than negative 2? Negative 2 is less than 0. 0 is less than 2. And 2 is less than 4. Yeah, so <clears throat> multiplying that didn't do anything. It just made my numbers bigger, really. But what if I said multiply by negative 3? Now what happens? Well, let's multiply everything by negative 3. Negative 3 times negative 4 is 12. Negative 3 times negative 2 is 6. Negative 3 times 0 is 0. Negative 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. And negative 3 times 4 is negative 12. Now, could I <clears throat> say that 12 is less than 6? Well, obviously not. So I can't have my inequalities going the same direction. My inequalities actually have all flipped around. Hmm, interesting. So <clears throat> when I multiplied by a positive number, nothing changed. But when I multiplied by a negative number, the inequalities changed direction. So that's interesting. Okay. So let's for a second, let's say I wanted to divide everything by negative 6. Nope. 
let's hold off on that for a second. Back up, sorry. Let's just divide by 6 for a second. If I just divide by 6, I get 2, 1, 0, negative 1, and negative 2. And of course, if I put in my inequality symbols, 2 is greater than 1, 1 is greater than 0, 0 is greater than negative 1, negative 1 is greater than negative 2. Huh, okay. What if I then divided by negative 1? So dividing it by the positive just made the number smaller. But what if I divide by negative 1? If you do that, I get negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Well, let's see what happens when I do that. Negative 2 is not greater than negative 1. It's less than. So look what happened. The inequality flipped directions again. Wow. So the inequality flipped directions. So <clears throat> notice that when I multiplied by a positive number, every, the, any, the direction of the inequality stayed the same. But if I divided by a, if I multiplied or divided by a negative number, the inequality flipped. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the rule that we need to talk about. And this is the only new thing you need to know about solving inequalities, and that is this. If you multiply or divide by and that's very important. Remember I told you that saying things properly is important? This is why. One of the reasons why, because if you multiply or divide by a negative number, a negative number, the inequality changes direction. So go ahead and repeat this with me. Say this with me. If you multiply or divide by a negative number, the inequality changes direction. Okay, say it again. If you multiply or divide by a negative number, the inequality changes direction. Okay, one more time. If you Come on, you were supposed to say it with me, or you're supposed to say it now on your own. So let's try that again. On the count of three, say the statement. One, two, three. Perfect. If you multiply or divide by a negative number, the inequality changes direction. So how does that affect us in equations? Remember that if I was solving this, 2x is less than 8. If I was doing 2x is less than 8, okay, how would you solve this? Well, you would take and you would divide both sides by 2. Here the 2's cancel, leaving me with the x is less than 4. Now think about that. <clears throat> is that correct? Well, I need a number x that's less than 4. So let's think of a number less than 4. 3. That works. What's 2 times 3? 6. Is 6 less than 8? Then I know it's correct. But what if I did this? Negative 2x is less than 8. Okay, this time I again would divide by negative 2, 
those cancel and I get x. Now normally you might think this would be less than negative 4, right? But give me a number that's less than negative 4. Negative 5. Well, negative 2 times negative 5, that's 10. Is 10 less than 8? Nah. So then this doesn't work, which is why I should have flipped it because I divided by a negative number. Now, give me a number x is greater than negative 4. Give me a number greater than negative 4. Oh, you say negative 3? Well, negative 2 times negative 3 is 6. Is 6 less than 8? Yes, it is. What about this one? What if I gave you 2x is less than negative 8? We know I would divide both sides by 2. Here, I get an x. This is negative 4. <clears throat> but the question is, do I flip the inequality? And the answer is, of course, no, I don't. Because I divided by a positive number, not a negative number. So it's only when you divide, multiply, divide by the negative number that you flip the inequality. Let me give you another example. Let's do this one here. x over negative 6 is greater than negative 3. Okay, <clears throat> what would you do to solve this inequality? Yeah, I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 6. Multiply both sides by negative 6. Well, the negative 6 cancel, so I get x. Come over to the other side. Negative 3 times negative 6 is positive 18. But because I multiplied by a negative number, the inequality changes direction. And I get x is less than 18. So let's recap for a second. When you are solving an inequality, it's solved the same way as an equation by you doing the opposite. But if you multiply or divide by a negative number, the inequality will change directions. Now, I want to make one more little comment to you about doing this in Edulastic. Because you have the op there are times in Edulastic that if you don't write it properly, it's going to mark it wrong. So do me a favor that whenever you use one of the inequalities, x leave a space, that's a space, is less than or equal to, leave another space, and then whatever number you have. So put a space on, other, on either side of the inequality so that we all have the same formatting for our answers and it won't mark you wrong because you didn't put it correctly. Okay? So there will be an Edulastic assignment listed on your Google Classroom. Good luck. We'll talk tomorrow during Zoom um, if you have any questions or we'll do more problems like this. Um, and this time, folks, it is so important that you do this. It won't be given to you like before. You will actually have to do it because of the inequality. So good luck and I will see you tomorrow.